Yemen was once a thriving nation, an ancient crossroads of trade between Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Today, the country is the poorest on the Arabian Peninsula and plagued by a myriad of problems. Football can hardly be expected to have remained unscathed, but there are plenty of upbeat tales, like Al Aruba, one of the newest members of the Yemeni Premier League. The club was founded in 2008 when two clubs from the capital, Sana'a, decided to merge. Nicknamed the Red Fury, Al Aruba clinched their first league title two years ago and placed third last season. Their manager, Mohamed El Nufi, has been acclaimed throughout the country for his leadership qualities, organisational skills and tactical acumen. We've tried to give young Yemeni players the chance to impress so we can build a strong national team for the future. Essentially, we're working on two fronts. First, to keep faith with the players who were here when the club was founded, and second, to push our youth players. But money is a problem. Most of the players aren't professional, so they have concerns about how they're going to support their families, especially if they don't have other jobs. If we had more money, we could focus on football alone and our players would be more skillful. Although Al Aruba's chief focus is to nurture homegrown talent, their squad boasts a number of players from abroad. Many Syrian refugees have fled their homeland in search of fresh opportunities, and some pretty decent footballers have ended up in Yemen. The standard of the game and the average monthly wage of 350 US dollars may not compare to the Syrian league as it once was, but life in Yemen is certainly more secure these days. The ongoing conflict in my country has held sport back. And that's why many Syrian football players have travelled to other countries to join teams and play professionally. One day, God willing, the situation in Syria will improve. And when that happens, all the players who've left the country will be able to return home and make the league stronger and more exciting once more. The 25,000-seat Ali Mohsen Stadium is the largest in Sana'a and recently played host to Al Aruba's home game against Al Tilal from Aden. But though tickets are free for every match, attendances are notoriously low with security concerns and the rival attraction of televised European football often blamed. This match is fairly one-sided as the Red Fury, playing in orange, scored three first-half goals without reply on their way to an easy win. While the fans may be happy with the team, they're less content with the general state of the game. It's been over a year since the national team last won, and while the Yemen Football Association is making changes, with new officers and a number of artificial pitches under construction, some believe it would be better to invest in human resources and improve coaching schemes. One day, perhaps, things may improve. Ahmad al Essi is the FA president. Every fan wants to see the sport and their national team improve. I'm aware that standards are falling short of expectations at the moment, but they're wrong to direct all the blame at the Football Association and the club managers. They don't know what goes on behind closed doors and what little support we get to help the players. I'd say that most players lack the basic things they need to live, let alone to play football. We can't help the players with all this, so they really shouldn't put all the blame at our door.